Hi guys, it's Henry Sable with another epic video for you all. The awesome guys over at thekeepercompany.com have set up another amazing interview. So I'm about to interview a top Premier League goalkeeper coach. I've been teasing you guys all week on my Instagram account with who it's going to be. So I'm pleased to tell you it is John Atterberg for Liverpool FC. He's been coaching the goalkeepers at Liverpool since 2009 and currently coaches the most expensive goalkeeper in the world, Alison Becker. Hello Mr Actorberg, nice to meet you. Can I call you John? Yeah, that's the best thing to call me John. <laughs> okay. No problem, Henry. You can call me John. It's nice and easy, you know? Yeah, thank you. I know in 1998 you joined Tranmere Rovers and obviously now you're coaching um, at Liverpool. So how, how has goalkeeping changed in the last 20 years? Um, yeah, when I, uh, I come obviously from Holland, I, I'm original from Utrecht, but uh, I, I was six years in, in, in Utrecht and then uh, three years with the first team. Then I go to NEC Breda and I was three years with the first team and I play, I think, about 15 games in the highest league and then I moved to Eindhoven. From Eindhoven, um, I, I go to, to Tramir. But uh, yeah, well, uh, your question was basically uh, what has changed. I, I think what has changed is uh, yeah, the goalie obviously needs to do a lot more football in the team, but also depends a little bit for who you play. In Liverpool or Man City, they like to have the goalkeeper, and, and now Chelsea with the new manager is the same. They like the goalkeeper to be really good with the feet and be able to pass with the left foot, right foot <clears throat> and pick players out. But uh, yeah, in my time in Holland, it was like that the same because they always want in Holland to, the goalie to be good with the feet. Um, but what I have to say is one major part from goalkeeping is still to keep the ball out of the net. And that um, is a bit uh, less uh, or a little bit uh, People for, forgot about it, and definitely in Holland. So I was pretty all right coming to England with the with the feet, um, but more in short uh, play. Um, when I came to Tramia, it was more long play, so I had to improve to hit distance and and be more accurate on the long kicking. So when I'm in Tramia, I basically took uh, the goal kicks. Uh, well over end circle and I, every free kick in my half I kicked the ball uh, in the box or around the box so we won the second ball but um, you can see now in, in the last few years in the Premier League all the teams like to uh, play more football so um, so all the goalies obviously have to improve that part massively uh, in, in that way but that is definitely improve, uh, changed from the past but I, I do think that the shot stopping is a, a major part from goalkeeping because you can make a match winning save that is most important now to win games. How do you want it to become a goalie then, Henry? So, basically, uh, the team I was at to start with, um, I was one week going in goal and then one week I was going on pitch and I was sharing um, going in goal with this other keeper um, and he then didn't want to do it anymore um, and then he wanted to go to go on pitch um, and I wanted to go in goal anyway so I ended up just going in goal full time um, I really enjoyed it so I'm carrying on like that For me it was a little bit the same you know I was playing out when I was uh, probably eight and uh, we had no goalie, so then I said, uh, okay, I'll, I'll go in goal and stay in goal. And then I play one game in my own team in goal, and then we had like 27 new teams. And then I always played in any other team, in any positioning I could play. So you're learning also to play football in, in the same way. 
So that was uh, for me also a good thing to do. We are we are lucky because we have uh, this week off. Oh, yeah. yeah, yesterday, oh. uh, Saturday was the or Sunday the last game. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we were finished then for one week because all the goalies are away, and yeah. all the players stay away with the national team. Yeah. So, so we uh, yeah we have an easy week, and then next week we start on Monday back with training. But uh, I have no goalies. Yeah. So what is a typical week being um, a professional goalkeeper coach? It's being a normal week. That means we have three games a week. So if I, I go start, uh, say start on uh, on Monday. On Monday we uh, because we have normally played on Saturday, Sunday, so Monday the players have a kind of recovery day. So if we play on Sunday, then on Monday the players have a recovery day, and the goalies uh, they have a normal goalkeeping training for one hour. Then the next day, then um, they have uh, the second day recovery. The players. And the ones who didn't uh, play, they do normal training. So the goalies, they join a little bit of normal training, and they do say uh, not our goalkeeping training. Um, then on Wednesday we have sometimes another game, so we have to adjust uh, just on uh, how much we can do on the, on the Tuesday with the goalies. But obviously, the number two and three can do a lot more. And then if we play Wednesday, then. On Thursday, the number one goalie has a little bit of recovery, and then all the other goalies they have another hour goalkeeping training and join the team training. Friday is the same. Um, if we play Saturday, then I work with the number three and four goal goalkeepers uh, about one and a half hour, but earlier, and then after that we do join with the the number one and the number two uh, keeper in the team training. So, because uh, the number three and four goalkeeper is not needed in the team training then, so they train separate with me. And then Saturday, if we play Saturday, then the young boys, they, they train sometimes in the morning. We take one of the two young boys as a number three, if we play away or home. The other one is tra training or playing in the reserves. And then Sunday we have uh, another training for the goalies and depends on uh, yeah when the next game is so it's all balanced on which when the next game is and how much we can do individual with each goalkeeper so it's basically four different programs for the four goalkeepers I work with uh, Alison sometimes has one day recovery or train normal depends on how busy the game was and the other number two two, three and four, they need to stay ready for the next game. And if one of the number three or four plays in the reserves, then I have to adapt the program again. So every time we have to think about the day before the game that we not overload them. So the goalie is, uh, is basically a percent ready and fit for the game. Um, so that's a little bit how it works and in that in that time you work with them, you have to work on every everything what is needed for the next game. Um, if the opponent uh, do, plays a lot with true balls, so you do true balls. If the opponent likes to uh, get a, a lot of crosses from corners, we do a lot of reactions and, and working on catching cross. So, so, and next to that, we try to do the improvements uh, as an individual as well. So that is a big program, what you have in your head. And, and the cycle is sometimes seven days a week, because if you play three games a week, then there is no day off really, because uh, yeah, the, all the goalies need to uh, training in between. And you have to prepare for the next game again. And you have meetings with the goalies uh, the day before the game. To, to see what the free kicks uh, the opponent take and how uh, how they take the corners and, and what the strengths from the opponent is and weakness. So we, we look at everything. We have analysts who work with that 
and they look at everything, they give us the information, we have a meeting with all the coaches, how the opponent plays, and, and so on. So it's a really hectic week, and, and, and in between we also look at other goalies and new goalies, so you're scouting goalies, looking at goalkeepers who are out on loan, so we have Bogdan and Karius out on loan, so you watch how they did in the game, a right report on that, and then looking at every new goalkeeper in any league in the world comes up to see if there's any good for the future for us or if we want to sign a new young goalie from 14 or 15 then we look at that as well to find goalies so it's a, a, a big job and a long job yeah. so uh, it's it's hectic but it's enjoyable because uh, yeah it's a, a dream job to do it does sound really busy. I've been told you are a goalie and you want to be the goalie in the yeah. future. Yeah. So, uh, so, so what did you do? What What do you do do during the week for that? Um. So during the week, I do normally training. I do four to five times a week. Um, training. Um, inc that's including my academy training as well. Oh, that's good. Uh, and and uh, what kind of things you do in training? I do two sort of on pitch sessions, and then the uh, three to the others are goalkeeping. So on Wednesday, I do um, a training session with my goalkeeper coach. Um, on Tuesday, I do my teams training. Uh, oh yeah, Saturday I'm at home, and then Sunday I do a match for my team. When you have goalkeeping training, what kind of exercises you do? You do 1v1 stuff, uh, reactions, um, um, working on crosses? Um, I feel I need to get better at my 1v1s. Um, well, sometimes I come out, but if I do, I normally turn away um, instead of doing like a block sort of shape. So I need to improve on that. And then um, in the last session I did, um, I did we did like um, diving um, yeah. and making sure we're diving out um, and not like twisting around when uh, when diving because that right. slows you down and you don't get as far doing that. You have to try and keep always uh, your body control and shape when diving, no? Yeah. And that that means if you uh, go quick, you still have to control your legs. Yeah. Because it if you kick your legs forward, then your whole body goes backwards. Yeah. So you actually actually need to try and control your bottom part of your body mm. to be yeah. able to keep in a good shape and be able to catch the ball in the dive. Yeah. It's, uh, that's what I always try and teach the, the goalies when yeah. I was working in the academy. Obviously with the first team it's a little bit different because most of them, they all have the right technique already. So we just keep on proving in, in small, small details then. I, uh, you've been on trial, I heard, in uh, Leeds and Orient, no? Yeah, I have. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was like an hour journey there and then an hour journey back as well, so it was quite a way. So, yeah, it's a long drive now. Yeah. And how, how many t times you go there? Once a week or two times a week? Uh, so, two times every week, and then every other week I do three. But, uh, you have played any any friendlies for them yet, or not? No, they the trials ended, and they decided not to sign me. So. Okay. Dur during the trial, I broke my wrist, so I only had two weeks instead of six. So, but then you just have to keep working hard. There's so many clubs around London, no? Yeah. Always uh, need a bit of work as well, and football have to make the next step. That just that's how it is. Not everyone has the work, and you have always things what doesn't work out in football, and then you keep going. And then in my career happened the same. One club sent me away. I keep working hard to get to the next club, and then you kick on. That's yeah. how it works. Um, a lot of keepers worry about their height. Um, do professional clubs worry about keepers' height when they're young? 
Yeah, of course. Uh, if you look at the stats nowadays, there's not too many small goalkeepers uh, um, in, in the in the Premier League. I think Matthew Ryan at the moment at Brighton is uh, the smallest one. Uh, if I uh, think out of the top of my head, so it's possible uh, that uh, if you are really good in in technique and, and reading game situations that you still can play in the Premier League because you show that and Michel Forma Tottenham was, was similar. They were about 180 or 182. Um, but uh, yeah, in general, at the moment, uh, the goalies are really big um, in, in, the, uh, in the UK and most of them, they are minimum six foot three. So in the Liverpool, situation I can talk about is that we do look uh, for goalkeepers who are going to be tall um, but sometimes uh, if we can't find one then obviously we also have the goalkeeper who is small but they will be a lot harder for them to reach the top level I would say but we all treat them the same and try to get the best out of each individual to get the highest level for the goalie, so. Click above to see part two, where John Actberg gives you advice on making it pro, getting scouted, 1v1s and diving power, Alison Becker's strength, his top tips for young goalies, and finally, short sleeve shirts and beards.